something for you? Come on. Come on. Hey, I know, I know, I'll cut it out. Hey, he ain't hurting no one. Okay, Lieutenant, but take it easy. Mr. Baxter's a friend of mine. I've known him a long time. So have I. What's he owe you? Six fifty. Can I help you with him? I can handle him. I'm on. Hey, Say I'm glad this is the last time I'm going to have to do this. Bring him in here, Spence. Look at him. Paul Baxter and clean sheets. They just don't add up to, they says. Shower and a shave will help. It'll take a lot more than a shower and a shave to make anything add up for him again. You just don't have any faith in him at all, do you, Spence? Penny, I got more faith in these guys than most people have. In fact, I got so much faith in them, I can predict exactly what'll happen when you clean them up and turn them loose. He'll go get drunk again. Anybody deserves another chance. We got him another chance on every newspaper in town. Well, he still needs help. Oh, come on, sis. Why don't you just settle for being a good newspaper woman till the right guy comes along, huh? He is the right guy. Yeah, the top reporter in town at 25, and he's an alcoholic bum before he's 30. You call that right? You made me a promise, Spence. I know, I know. I, I just don't want to see you throw your life away. I want to see you happy, that's all. Then keep your promise. I love him. All right, you'll love him. But you're my sister. I happen to love you. Believe me, that's the only reason I'm going through with this deal. It took me a long time to make lieutenant, you know. I could be back pounding a beat in 30 seconds if the department found out what I'm up to. So I think maybe that gives me a right to make you promise. Look, if he goofs this one up, you see him for the last time. I mean it, Penny. I want you to promise me this is the end of the line. It's the end of the line. Good night, sis. Terrible. I look terrible. I feel terrible. I, uh, I need a drink. You need a shower and a shave. Penny, any point in asking what I'm doing here? When I'm drunk, I don't know what I'm doing. If I gave you any trouble. Spence brought you. Why? Because I still love you, and because I just had to try once more. Penny, get me a drink, will you? Spence stopped by your place and got your razor and some clothes. When you get cleaned up, we'll talk. Drink 
coffee just makes my shakes worse. It isn't coffee. Hot tomato juice, I should have known you wouldn't forget. I remember a lot of things, Paul. It won't work, Penny. And you know it. I'll run away again, get drunk. So please don't get sentimental. Keep it light, honey. Keep it light and it won't hurt so much. In fact, if I could find a drink, it wouldn't hurt me at all. Why can't you face anything without a drink? Didn't I tell you I'm a two below par? A what? Two below par. See, there are people who are born two drinks below par. I'm one of them. An interview with a boss or a party or meeting new people. Without those two drinks, I'm just not quite my own bright, witty self. You don't start with two drinks, though, Paul. Oh, well, uh, that's because of the daily fears of the drinker. Let me tell you about them. Please don't. Fear number one, the fear of yourself. In order to conquer your own inadequacies and face the world on equal terms, to be sharp and gay and efficient, you must have a drink. Now, having made this decision, you discover that you're even sharper and gayer and more efficient on three drinks. Then, suddenly, from left field comes another fear to spoil everything. The fear that you might appear drunk to others. Now, this, of course, will never do. This must be washed away. So you drink some more, and all of a sudden, all is serene. Until something hits you right between the eyes. The fear that you might be killing yourself for the stuff, the fear of death. At all costs, this cowardly thought must be wiped away. Drown it. This may take a little doing, but you can, you can finally do it. Then, from somewhere, comes the worst fear of all, the fear of the next day, of waking up the next morning. And this you cannot face, so you Drink yourself into oblivion. But inevitably, the next morning comes, and you find you're still in the company of the same miserable person you've been trying to escape from, yourself. And you're faced with fear number one all over again, like right now. Paul. Paul, I, uh... I've told you why you're here. I just can't give up without trying once more. If you love me enough to help, you'll have to forget your two below par and all your fears for the rest of the day. And if you don't love me, there's a bottle of scotch in the kitchen. Darling, please try, please, like you've never tried anything in your life before. Okay, I'm trying. Come here. Come right over here. Now, just, just sit there and listen. Do you know who Dutch Hayden is? Dutch Hayden? Number one bad man in the country, sure. Kidnapper, murderer, what, why? He's here in town. Sometime tonight, he's going to be shot to death. Stay sober until it happens, and you'll be the only reporter in the country to see it. Well, now, wait a minute. Just listen. Dutch Hayden dropped out of sight 18 months ago. Police all over the country have been looking for him. And all of a sudden, he's handed to Spence on a silver platter. Spence? He told you this? He got the whole picture from a woman. Hayden's had a plastic job done on his face, and he's been in town all the time. Well, why is the woman turning him in? 
Why does any woman turn on a man? Yeah. She contacted Spence about a week ago. She's a striptease dancer in one of the local joints. And she promised to deliver Hayden tonight. You said he was going to be shot. Well, Spence is going to try to take him without any violence, but Hayden said he would never be taken alive. Darling, with a story like this, even the Times would take you back. Just look at this. Here is the newspaper file on Hayden. His records, clippings, everything. The picture won't do you much good because that was done before the plastic job. Handsome. Well, that shows his good qualities. Inside, he's worse. You can stay here and read up on him. There's a typewriter and some paper in the closet. And some food in the refrigerator if you want some. I'll get word to you when Spence knows the time and the place. Penny. I've got to know one, Penny. How long do I have to hold out? Darling, I wish I knew. But I don't. I know it won't be before 6 o'clock tonight. So you've got to get through the whole day. I can't do it by myself, Penny. I haven't got the strength in me. Maybe you can find it outside of you. It just wouldn't mean anything if I stayed here. You've got to get through this thing with no crutches. Not even me, or it won't mean anything. I'm scared, Penny, but... I Dear God, please help him. Give me the strength. car announcement you've been waiting for. Tom Steele offers $100. That's right. $100 reward. Tom Steele guarantees $100 if you can beat his deal on a used car. The car of your choice. From his big... diagram map drawn to that intersection. Right. And by the way, I haven't talked to anybody else about this yet. Oh, sure, Lieutenant. Can't risk a leak. Not that we've got a chance to bag the biggest fish in the pond, huh? Well, don't get too far away, will you? We might not get much notice. Okay. I'll keep four or five men standing by. Eight men. Eight, Lieutenant? I thought Hayden was a lone wolf, no moth. He's still Dutch Hayden. He's gone to a lot of trouble to stay alive so far. He might go to more. Looks like we may get famous today, huh? Make sure we don't get famous in the obituary columns.
Bronson's lager with Eastern flavor. You can even hear the difference. It tastes different, too. There's nothing like a long, cool glass of delicious Bronson's lager at any time of day or night. Penny Spencer, please. Yes? Oh. Is everything all right, darling? Yeah, yeah, sure, it's okay. But look, if I just had a time, uh, I mean, a, a time to shoot for, you know, it would make it much easier. Penny? Penny. Do you write this? Yes. Just a minute, Sam. I'm sorry, I, I can't give you that information yet. I haven't heard anything, but I will. And I'll call you just as soon as I do. Yeah, sure, I understand. I shouldn't have called in the first place. No crutches allowed. Hello? Hello? This isn't very good, Penny. Better do it again. OK, Sam. Look, if there's anything bothering you too much, you can always come back and talk with me. Thank you.
I don't know when I've been so embarrassed. Sorry, Lieutenant, this just came by special messenger, Mark Durgeon. Wait a minute, we'll see what it is. The call range, get him in here right away. Don't use that phone, I need it. Sure, Lieutenant. Close the door behind you, will you? Right. Penny Spencer, please. Listen, I just got a message from that woman I told you about. Now, if you think that friend of yours is any condition, understand it. Here it is. Okay, shoot. Barclays Restaurant. That's at 3rd and Lloyd Street. It's 7 o'clock tonight. She's having dinner with Hayden. Thank you, Spence. I love you. How about that rewrite, Penny? Penny? Bourbon, Pat. drink. The thing was, he, his hand shook so much he couldn't get the drink to his mouth. Had to use two hands like this. Spence, you've got to find him for me. Find him? Penny, you gave me a word. We don't know for sure yet. I'll make book on it. Maybe he went for a walk. Went for a walk. If he went for a walk, he headed right for his sanctuary, O'Connell's Bar. O'Connell's. Paul Baxter there, Miss Penny Spencer calling. Yeah, he's here. Baxter, the phone is for you. Miss 
Penny Spencer. I believe in you, and I know you can do it. Thanks. It helps. Paul, listen very carefully and memorize this. Around 7 o'clock tonight, Dutch Hayden and the woman will come out of Barclays Restaurant. Now, that's at Lloyd Street and 3rd Avenue. You better give yourself an hour to get there. She will pretend to have forgotten her purse, and she'll go back inside. Spence says there's some brown stones across the way so you can watch from one of the roofs. He doesn't want you to get in the way down on the street. Naturally, he hasn't told any of his men about you, so try not to let any of them see you. No, I'll be careful. And Penny, I'm going to walk right out of this place, and I'm not coming back. 7 o'clock, Paul. Just till 7. Baxter? Yeah. I've uh, got a 7 o'clock appointment. Hey. Listen, will you try not to worry about it for a while, huh? Go to a movie or something? Here, get yourself a new hat. That'll make you feel better. Thank you, Spence. I'll be better off back at work, though. Spencer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just went into the restaurant. All right, once more, huh? This is Barclays. When a woman leaves Dutch on the sidewalk, I move in from the telephone booth and make the arrest. If he goes for a gun, that's it. Farrell, that's your position right there in case he tries to get around the corner. Harris. Burke, Gibbs, these three doorways. Nelson, you go up on the roof of this brownstone to cover the street from right there. This is a theater, Marquis. Tom, that's your spot. What time does the show let out? We don't want to get mixed up with the crowds. We made a deal with the manager. He's going to hold them until it's over. Spence, you haven't spotted me yet. I'm going to hold you and Mitch till we get there. I'll assign you then. All right, that's all. We're going to leave in 15 minutes. That's 6.15. One more thing. Let's not have any heroics from anybody tonight. The department's getting short-handed enough as it is. Let me out down at the end of the floor.
lady I forgot my purse. Be an angel, bring the car around while I get it, huh? Okay, doll. Keep back there. Where's Lieutenant Spencer? I gotta find Lieutenant Spencer. Oh, he's gone. What do you mean? Where'd he go? What, what's that to you? What's Look, the I, trouble? Dutch Hayden's right over there. Sure, sure he is. And who do you suppose that is under the sheet? You shot the wrong man. I tell you, Dutch Hayden's alive and he's right over there. All right, all right. You've told us and we're very indebted to you. Now, run along and sober up and say, you better take care of that cut. If you'll just come with me, I can come prove on, get it. He's going. Right. Get Look, going. Wait a Where do they come from? Come on now, keep going. Come on, keep moving. But I'll just come on, buddy. Come on. Now. until you locate him. Tell him to call me. Call back so he knows me. Wait a minute. What's the number of the bar phone, Pat? Sycamore 8, 4362. I'm at Sycamore 8, 4362. Yeah. Yeah, and listen, Sergeant. This is important to him, too. Spencer? No, not right now. Coffee break, I guess. Uh, yeah, shoot. Mm -hmm. 
second one. Got it. It's quite all right. Charlie, just got a call. There's been a shooting on 3rd Avenue outside Barclays. Know it? I'll find it. They get out there. Take a photographer. Right. Pete, that's us. Who reported the shooting? A waiter at the restaurant. Lieutenant Spencer, is he back? Yeah, yeah, it's me again. Haven't you found him yet? I don't care about your other business. Listen, I'm protecting him on something big, and I can't sit on it all night, so find him. Hello? Hello? Sure, there's a door in the back. What's wrong, Mr. Baxter? Look, Pat, if anyone asks for me or, or who I am, you don't know anything, huh? Well, that's me, Mr. Baxter. See nothing, hear nothing, know nothing. Arnold's bar. Say, um, I'm sorry to bother you, fellow, but I'm a cabbie. You just dropped a fare off at your place. Um, young fellow. But, uh, kind of banged up. Oh, yeah. His, uh, coat was torn. That the one you mean? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. He left a package in my cab. I'd like to find him. Know who he is? Happen to know his name? Well, he's only been in a couple times before. Uh, never did get his name. Uh, it's too bad. Uh, must live around here somewhere close, though, huh? I wouldn't know about that. I uh, wish I could help you, but I'm afraid I can't. Sorry. There's a call for you on Hamlet's phone. Oh, thanks, Mac. Golfing, Miss Knapp. Oh, thanks. Hello? Oh, just a minute. Uh, Hamlet, uh, be a doll, take Shakespeare for a walk, will you? Honey, you shouldn't call me here. 
Listen, baby, we got problems. What's the matter? Something's gone wrong, hasn't it? I was spotted on the roof by some character. He recognized me and got away. I got no idea as to who he is or where to find him. And he'll go to the police, huh? He already did, and they brushed him off, but sooner or later, they got to listen to him. After 18 months of planning, Maybe we gotta change those plans. We're leaving tonight. Now, listen to me. You got two more shows to do, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and those reporters were coming over to interview me, but I better leave right now. No, no, no. Play it cool like nothing was wrong. You never know who's watching you. Uh, you go through with that interview. When you're finished with your last show, meet me at my place. I'll have this packed and ready to go. Get it? All right, sweetie. And you, be careful. Look at it this way. Well, you tried, honey. You did everything humanly possible. Now I can keep my promise. That's my girl. Hey, if he bothers you again, remember you got a brother that's a cop. Hmm? I gotta call Reigns. Spencer, let me talk to Sergeant Raines, will you? Raines. All right, it's me. Oh, hi, Lieutenant. Say, some joker named Paul Baxter's been calling here for you. Wouldn't talk to anybody else. Left a number of O'Connell's bar. You want it? No, I can't use it. You sound pretty wild. Like he might be one of O'Connell's best customers. He is. At all? Oh, I sent out that teletype to San Quentin and Sing Sing. Okay, we ought to have that stuff by morning. Confirm Hayden's identity. We'll get a death certificate. That's right. You don't have to go out again tonight? No, it's nothing important. I'm free for the rest of the night. Please, have you got a drink any place? Believe me, I need one now like I never needed it before. Spence, you killed the wrong man. Dutch Hayden's still alive. Oh, brother, wait until I tell you. Go on inside, Penny. I've handled drunks with hallucinations before. I want to talk to him, Spence. Paul, I don't know if you can even understand what I'm about to say. But please don't interrupt me. I'm sorry about tonight that it didn't work out. I'm sorry for both of us but mostly for you. I can get over this, but I know what's in store for you. Well, but, but Penny, believe me, I, I, I didn't let you down. Wait until I tell you. Maybe I'm being a coward running out on you. I don't know. All I know is I can't take it anymore. Not another minute. I love you so much, I don't want to ever see you again. Penny, honey. Oh, but Penny, wait, honey. You've had it around here, Junior. Now, why don't you get going? Spence, I'm not drunk. You can see I'm not. Look at me. I can smell it on you. I can explain that. I bet you can explain a lot of things. I suppose you poured those bottles down the drain? Yes, I did. You changed your name to Charles Sandley? I didn't write that story. I couldn't write it. That's exactly the point I'm making. I couldn't write it because it isn't true. Oh, brother. Look, 
I've had the biggest story of the year all night and didn't go near a newspaper just to protect you, and now you don't even have the sense to listen to me. Why don't you try Sam Carew at the Times? Go on, be my guest. Fix me something to eat, or I have to take you out to dinner. That's the best offer I've had all day. I'll fix my face. I told the police. I told Lieutenant Spencer. And he didn't believe me either. But look, this isn't a this isn't a stunt to get my job back. Dutch Hayden is alive. I saw him. I'm giving you the biggest story of the year. Night final, Sam. Thanks. Oh, Joe. Yes, Sam? You better give a copy to Mr. Baxter here. Oh, sure. Good night. Appreciate your kindness. The only thing is, I'm going to bed. It's late. Why don't you do the same, huh? And uh, sleep it off. OK, OK. There are other people in this town. I'll find somebody who can prove this story. Try Detective Story magazine. They buy that kind of stuff. I'll be right with you, boy. Well, look who's here, fellas. Paul Baxter. Hi, Harry. I didn't see you come in with us. Hey, when she says grind, she really means it. Dutch Hayden, Miss Knapp. Oh, gosh, I'm trying to. Yeah, come on, give us a pen. Are you going yeah. to the funeral? Oh, Jesus, well, it's just a question of the time. Well, we got to have to answer the problem. Come back without a second. Oh, please, fellas, let's not talk about Dutch anymore, huh? After all, I am still quite upset. Well, that's it, boys. Thanks a lot. Any more questions, you all come around later, huh? Where do you go from here, Miss Knapp? Oh, well, Reno made me an offer, but I can't go. I'm not married. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Miss Knapp. Oh, Bye. sure, you're Bye. welcome. Sure, anytime. Well, don't you have a deadline? I sure do. Just one question, though. Where are you and Dutch Hayden going to spend your honeymoon? South America, maybe? And who are you? 
Let's just say I'm a, a salesman. I've got some information. I'm out to sell it to Dutch Hayden. Dutch Hayden's in the morgue. The police think he's in the morgue. The newspapers think he's in the morgue. But we know better, don't we? We know Hayden never had a plastic job at all. The poor guy who did was just a pigeon set up by Hayden. You told the police it was Dutch. Fed the pigeon a hearty meal at Barclays and then led him into the trap. That's who's in the morgue. You crazy. Who'd ever believe it? Maybe the police will. Or Dutch, when you tell him, I'm the man on the roof. Tell Dutch I want $5,000 cash. You are crazy. Nobody ever tried to shake down Dutch Hayden and lived. I'm not worried. Tell him I'd have ways of talking much louder dead than alive. How does he send the money to you? He doesn't. He brings it in person. No other way. Where? I'll phone you later and let you know. I'll give you enough time to get in touch with Hayden. I enjoyed your show. You got a good voice. And, sweetie, this reporter said that Paul Baxter's a real boozer. There isn't a newspaper in town that'll have anything to do with him. Looks like he's stuck with a hot story he can't peddle. What about the police? They still won't believe him without me. It's me he's looking for. And I might just let him find me. Well, honey, I I'm afraid of it. Let's just get out of here, huh? Sure, baby, be sure. Now, here's what I want you to do. Home stay, sis, getting late. Thanks for cheering me up, Spence. We're never going to talk about it again, right? Right. What's this? I don't know. It's for Paul. Listen to this. Penny, I don't expect you to believe this, but read it anyway. You won't have to wait long to find out if I'm drunk. I think I'm going to get Dutch Hayden to my apartment at 2 o'clock this morning on a phony blackmail ruse. Obviously, I'll have to try to take him alone. If Spence wants to show up, I sure could use him. But as I say, I doubt if you'll believe this. So this note is just for the record. If I should die, it, it might help you and the police department separate fact from fiction. Oh. This wasn't written by a drunk. I believe him. I can't keep my promise now, Spence. I lost faith in him just when he really needed me. All right, we'll find out if he's drunk or not. Let's go over to his place. We can get there before two. Backstage. Is Miss Knapp there, please? Miss Knapp? No, she left about 20 minutes ago. Said she was expecting a call, though, if we didn't take any messages. Tell her the salesman called. She's to have her buyer at the Cambridge Apartments, 536 West Court Street, apartment 23, at 2 o'clock this morning. Got that? Cambridge Apartments, 2 o'clock. 
Right. Honey, I thought you'd never separate yourself from this. How'd you get in here? It's easy to unlock a door if you have the right equipment. You're too early and you're the wrong buyer. <laughs> Don't you worry about a thing, honey. You're going to meet the right buyer and on time, too. I'll be right behind you, sweetie. Oh, and uh, please don't make me ruin my coat. It's the last thing Dutchie gave me before he got killed. After you. Sorry, I haven't had much experience in this kind of thing. I have. You had a good teacher, didn't you? You may learn something from him yourself tonight. Shall we go? His door was open. Yeah. Nobody here. Well, it isn't two o'clock yet. Okay, okay, sis. We'll wait down in the car. We can keep an eye on the place from there, and we'll listen for any police calls that might come in. Anything about Dutch? He's sentimental. Like about where he first met you. He insists the reunion should be the same place. Uh uh, honey. Over there. Number 16. Sweetie, I've got a late show. I've got to run. told me that said it was an original genuine oil painting. Some way out, huh? Nobody'd ever believe it, would they? Rattiest building in town. <laughs> you know, it's too bad, though. 
By 10 o'clock in the morning, there won't be a trace of Dutch hating on this town. Won't even be anybody around who knows he's alive. I'll know. Yeah? You know, when Flo told me all about you, she thought you might be on the level with that shakedown pitch. Five grand would buy a lot of booze, she said. But I figured it was me you wanted. I was right, wasn't I? Have it your own way. I always do. Like early tonight outside there. I had that my own way, too. You know who took them slugs in my place? My brother. Oh, what kind of a host am I? Letting you stand there with your big tongue hanging out. And me knowing all about how you like the stuff. How about that? My own brother. Well, he made too many mistakes, that's all. Like he thought Flo paid for his plastic job instead of me. And he went for his gun when the cops tried to grab him tonight. Just like I knew he would. He tried to make time with my girl. Come on, help yourself. It's for sure you ain't gonna get another chance. I don't want a drink. What? Are you trying to kid me? Who ever heard of a lush turning down a free drink? Drink it. Drink it yourself. I said you drink it. Don't make a move like that again, Baxter. Maybe I'd better tell you my plans. We're going back on the roof, you and me. And you're gonna jump off again. But this time, you're gonna hit the street, Baxter. The cops will buy a lush committing suicide. You're not getting rid of me that easy, Hayden. Yesterday, I couldn't have cared less. But today, I learned something. I found out I could go a whole day without a drink. Not one drink, Hayden. How do you like that? And if I could make it today, maybe I could do the same thing tomorrow. And the next day. Maybe for a whole week. You ain't gonna have the time to find out, kid. You have any idea what the day was like? I wanted to drink so badly, I, I even prayed a little. And I made it. Now I want to live. So you better hang on to that gun real tight. Because I'm going to be hard to kill. Let's get this over with. from this gun won't upset my plans that much, so don't get any ideas. Sign lights up again. Don't move because I can't miss from here. All right, straight ahead. Wait a minute. Make it easy on yourself, Baxter. When that light comes on again, walk right up to the edge and jump. It'll all be over in a second. It's stalling, Baxter. Only makes it worse. Sorry, Hayden. I'm not gonna make it easy for you. You sound like you mean that. 
I do. There's no place to hide, Baxter. Why not come out and do it my way? Give me the police. Hello, who am I talking to? Sergeant Anderson, this is Paul Baxter. I'm calling from an apartment near 3rd Avenue in Lloyd. I don't know the address, but it's got a big neon sign on the roof, a whiskey sign. It's a brownstone down the street from the uh, Barclays restaurant. Got that? Now, you get a hold of Lieutenant Spencer. I don't care where he is, get him and tell him I'm in apartment 16 and I've got Dutch Hayden. Yeah. I know. You think he's dead. Uh, Sergeant Anderson, is your name spelled with an E or an O? I want to be sure it's spelled right in the story about the police department that shot the wrong man when it breaks in the papers. Now you get Spencer over here and get him over here fast. All right, Hayden, get on your feet. Come on. Get him out of here. Spence, I'll write that story any way you want it. Now, what are you trying to do? Wreck my faith in you? You write the truth. Paul, I prayed so hard for you all day. I was the one that lost my faith tonight. Only for a little while, though. You didn't lose it, Penny. You just loaned it to me. 